The posterior cervical wedges are a way we're going to address what we saw in that standing test. So if you remember when Dave was nodding, go ahead and nod again for us, Dave. He had a lot of movement up at the top of his neck, but not so much at the bottom. And well, let's look for a second just at flexion. When he flexes, he's able to lengthen at the top, but the bottom doesn't lengthen. In other words, something is keeping it uh, restricted in the backside. Either that or the front side of his neck isn't participating. The prevertebral muscles along the front of the spine possibly aren't participating. In either case, this posterior cervical wedges technique can help. I'm using a wedge shaped tool with my fingers. I'm going either side of the spinous processes on both sides. I'm going to start real low, possibly as far as down as T1, C7. And Dave, you go ahead and do a small nod, but instead of doing that, which is your usual nod, which is more centered up at the top, see if you can find this place where my fingers are. Great. So you you got enough body sense that you're able to force your head back and open this up, but let's get smaller. Start over. And now, the, let's see, the first thing that moves is here. Before you do anything, oh, yeah, so that was this. That was the upper part. Keep trying. There's the, oh. Okay, stay small. You can find it if you get big. We want it small. There you go. Keep doing the small movements. Yeah, there you go. Feeling right up at the top. Now my coaching, my feedback, is a crucial part of the technique. That's what's going to let him know that he's doing it. That's the only, the only information he's going to have is, is me telling him what I feel, because otherwise he's just doing what is habituated to do. Now how's that going there, Dave? It's, it's going well. It's starting to open up more. You feel it opening up more. And uh, to my fingers, he's able to get a little more participation in that lower neck than we had when we began. My fingers are hunting around for these soft tissue restrictions. And as he continues to isolate the movement, he's essentially working with me as well. It's really important to get his movement very small and very specific like this, as opposed to that big, gross motor movement that he started out with. Show us, go back to the first way, Dave, if you can remember. How, yeah, that's a more volitional uh, sleeve-based movement, which is pushing the, it open, as opposed to this much smaller uh, motion that involves having to release the deepest structures in the neck to get him to move. And uh, is that making sense to you, Dave, that yeah. openness here? It's feeling much clearer mm -hmm. to me, too. Now, was that a yes or was that just that a was yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Great. Now, once I got that open, I can move up a little bit to the next joint. So find this one now. This is a little different. I've moved up now. I'm probably C4, C5. And on Dave, there's a little posteriority here where these are a little prominent, both of these two joints. So I'm showing him how he could open these up. Now, sometimes you'll find people with a military neck, a neck that is so straight that you'll actually be encouraging them to close there. Uh, that's not the case in, for Dave's neck as a whole, but this joint in particular, we're wanting him to focus on both opening here and closing. Yep very specifically, right here at this level. Yeah, and his movement is staying very small, very precise, so that he can feel exactly what's happening. Moving just this joint. His breath is great. Yep. Take a rest there if you want, Dave. Now, for him to be able to lengthen, for him to be able to nod, he has to find a way to use those prevertebral muscles. Uh, I wouldn't tell him to try to do that. It wouldn't make sense to someone, and if they tried things, they'd do all kinds of things we didn't want them to do. All we're focusing on for him is him finding a way to open and close the space around the wedge that I'm holding him back. Go ahead and try this one. I've moved up one now. That's it. So he's got the game plan now. He's able to get very specific, very quickly, about which spot to open and close. That's it, Dave. He's, he's refining as we go. And so I'm doing, having to do less coaching now because he's, he's taken over the monitoring of where his movement is initiating, where it's happening. And then finally, the top, all the way up to the top. And if we're going to do any of them, we want to make sure to do this top joint because it's the one that gets the most restricted on, in general. And if we don't get it, uh, people can be prone to headaches, 
problems that pop up later, neck feeling uh, a little funny. So you want to make sure you release this top joint. And in the supplemental techniques, we'll show you one specifically about this area. Essentially here, uh, I'm ex just extending the same idea up into this top joint where I'm having him nod, and I'm monitoring, is he able to open and close this joint? Now if you remember the test, Loretta had less movement here than Dave, so if we were doing this with her, we'd probably be spending more time up here at the top, while with Dave, we spent more time at the bottom. It's reaching the whole person. Even though you might be working on just a few areas, um, fascially, we're one continuum. And so you're, you're reaching that whole person with this work. It's good work.